Alright, today we're going to be taking a look at the chain rule. And first I'm going to explain what it is in mathematical terms, and then I'll give an example, and I'll explain what it is more informally. So the chain rule states that if a function g is differentiable at a point x, and another function f is differentiable at g of x, then the composite function, which is f of g of x, is also differentiable at a point a. So what does this mean? Well, what if we have the function y is equal to e to the x squared? So what we're going to say is that g of x is equal to x squared. So we know this is differentiable at x. This is g prime of x is equal to 2x. And now let's take a look at f of g of x. So we say that f is equal to e to the u. So f prime is going to equal to e to the u as well. But the composite function, so we know that this is differentiable and this is differentiable, therefore the composite function f of g of x equal to e to the x squared is also differentiable. Now, what is the rule for differentiating? Well, let's take a look at the rule here. If we have a function f of g of x and we take its derivative, it is equal to f prime of g of x multiplied by g prime of x. So this doesn't necessarily look straightforward, but I will show you what this means in just a second with an example. In fact, we'll just take that same example we worked with, because I'm sure you want to see the conclusion of that. y is equal to e to the x squared. So what we do is we take what uh, is known as we derive the function, and then we derive the inside function. So what we're going to do here is we're going to let u equal x squared. So we have e to the u, and we derive that, and we get y prime is equal to e to the u. And then we're going to derive u, which is x squared, and so we're going to take the derivative of that. So we're going to multiply it by g prime of x. So I should say that g of x is equal to u. So g prime of x is 2x. And of course, we just plug x squared back into u. So y prime is equal to e to the x squared times 2x. Hopefully this made a bit of sense. So you have g of x is equal to x squared, and you have f of g of x is equal to e to the x squared. So let's take a look at another problem, and hopefully I will explain this again in a little bit of an easier manner. I like this question better because the inside-outside functions show really well. So we have x squared plus 1 to the 1 half. This is the same thing as the square root of x squared plus 1. So what we do is we take the derivative of the outside function. We treat this here as if it was a single variable u. So y prime is equal to, well, we say 1 half because we take the power down and we keep this the same inside and then we take one off the power so negative one half and then we multiply it by the derivative of the inside so this is 2x so we get x times x squared plus one to the negative one half and that is the chain rule in uh, Leibniz notation this is dy dx is equal to the derivative of y with respect to u multiplied by the derivative of u with respect to x. So you can kind of see how this is happening here. This section right here is our dy du, and this section right here is our du dx. But you can see the derivative of u here with respect to x. So x squared plus 1, the derivative of that with respect to x is 2x. All right, so this wasn't necessarily too difficult. I'm going to give you one more little example here, which is even easier. Let's say we have e to the 2x. 
Well, we take the derivative. So we take the derivative of e to the 2x, which is the same thing as e to the u. So we get e to the u as, a, as our derivative, so e to the 2x. But we multiply by the inner function here, which is 2. So we get 2 times e to the 2x. This will become second nature soon. Uh, I, I kind of remember it as deriving the outside function, multiply by the inner function, multiply by the inner function. You keep going inside and inside and inside until you've finished all your functions. Alright, so with that, I'll leave you guys with a couple practice questions. Um, y is equal to... Actually, I'm just going to leave you with one, because we've already done this other one. x times e to the negative kx. And I want you to find the derivative of this. Notice that you will have to use the product rule. Don't be scared about it, but uh, you might have to use the rule. So, I'll be back in a second. Okay, so our derivative here, we have to use product rule. So we're going to start off by taking the derivative of x, which is 1 times the second function, e to the negative kx, and then we have to add x times the derivative of the second function. So the derivative of the second function is e to the negative kx multiplied by the derivative of the inner function, which is negative kx. So the derivative of negative kx is negative k. So we multiply by negative k, and we get e to the negative kx minus kx e to the negative kx. We can factor out an e to the negative kx here to get 1 minus kx. And this is our solution. In fact, if you remember from one of the earlier videos, or you can even check this out for yourself. Now, let's say we have e to the 2x. And actually, sorry, x e to the 2x. Well, this will be equal to x times 2 e to the 2x plus e to the 2x. We take a derivative quick, which is the same as e to the 2x of... 2x plus 1. And if we take a look here and we let k equal to negative 2, then if we plug negative 2 in there, that's the same as saying 1 plus 2x, which is what we get here. So you can either remember this formula for x e to the negative kx, or you can just derive it every single time, which will become much faster the more you do it. All right, so that was the three basic rules, product rule, quotient rule, chain rule. You can pretty much drive everything now except for trig, which we will cover in the next video.